Acolyte deserved to be canceled. It did get canceled. Justice was served. Goodbye, terrible show. And the numbers prove it. And I think that the Acolyte is good. I enjoyed it. Namely the fight scenes, namely the villain. Um, we got to see a lot of cool worlds and a lot of cool references to Star Wars stuff we had never seen in live action before. But because it yeah. was terrible, and most people are, are in agreement. They didn't enjoy the show. Okay, I'm gonna talk to the camera for a second. Yeah. You're gonna hear Dan say a lot that this show is terrible. And that it's bad, and, and that it was awful. Say that he thinks it's great. But you're not going to hear him give reasons. <laughs> My faith and hope in humanity has been reaffirmed by the fact that they didn't watch this show. Facts. I don't know how that's related to this being a good show or not. I will say this though, Andor still performed better than Acolyte. The protagonist can't make up her mind about what she wants to do throughout the throughout the entire episode, let alone the entire series. And she just makes whims up. Whatever she does is what she does because the writers need it to happen at that moment. I want to invite everyone in the comments to not only talk about what your opinion is on the debate and who you agree with, but also who you think made a better argument. Because that's a big part of why these we make these debates. Welcome to Backseat Directing. Where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron with Justin and Dan. Woo! We post new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And today we're gonna to be debating on whether or not The Acolyte was a good show <laughs> and if Disney should have canceled it. <laughs> Three, two, one, action. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. He couldn't wait till after. <laughs> so, Dan, I assume you love the show? Oh, yeah. I yeah, let's get our positions out first. So, um, sitting on this side of the table, we've got Aaron and Andrew on the, the pro acolyte Portis. side of the table. <laughs> and sitting on that side of the table, we've got the low impulse control. <laughs> um, Anti-acolyte <laughs> side of the table with Dan and Justin. Yeah. Well, so we'll go through this kind of in like a not super formal structure. Um, <laughs> it's because Dan's not capable of any no type of formal formal structure. You can tell so far. Um, but we'll we'll do probably like just quick opening remarks and then just hash it out. Yeah. Justin, give us a 30 second little spiel of where you sit. Oh, before we go into where we sit, I want to give a preface to the debate. Okay, yeah. So Aaron mentioned this last week when we were gonna film. Um, I want to invite everyone in the comments to not only talk about what your opinion is on the debate and who you agree with, but also who you think made a better argument. Because that's a big part of why these we make these debates. Whether you agree with them or not, who you thought argued better for their case, who, or if you change your mind, that's a big thing too. I figure maybe if we're lucky 10% of people are in the middle and can sway either direction. So if somebody made you think it was bad or somebody made you think it was good, go ahead and leave that in the comments. Make sure to like, rate, subscribe, hit us up on all our channels. We post short form content every day on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X, threads all over the place. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell because we've been putting out extra episodes as well. Marshall Mathers in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss anything on the Patreon? Discord? <laughs> yeah, join oh, yeah. us in the Discord. The Discord is? This is where? For free. <laughs> It's where this whole thing started. Like, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> we have that. Justin yeah. and Dan. They're both in the Discord. We've been talking about this in the Discord, for sending a while. links. Yeah. So we finally got them in person here to debate their position. Justin, start us off. Thirty seconds. Where do you sit? And then we'll go to you, Dan, and then Andrew and I. Well, first of all, I sit in the fourth chair on this <laughs> podcast. Uh, and I, 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 of course, sure. I prepared, so I wrote a lot of stuff down for. So if it looks like I'm reading, it's because I am, because I wrote this all. Okay. okay. Someone's gonna call you out in the comments for sure. So Whatever. It's a good thing that you. Whatever. It's my notes. All right. You see that? <laughs> um, so this is what I prepared for this situation. The acolyte is a perfect example of Disney trying to reinvent the wheel when the wheel is already solid and doesn't need changing. Regardless of whether people like the movies, shows, whatever happens has happened in Star Wars. Since Disney has taken over, the decline of Star Wars content has been consistent with some random gems. Okay, Dan? It, 30 early, seconds, where do you sit? 30 seconds? Ish. <laughs> I sit here and I definitely <laughs> say that Acolyte deserved to be canceled. It did get canceled, justice was served. Goodbye, terrible show, and the numbers prove it. That's all I need to say. Okay. 
Darren, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay, so I was the last person to watch the Acolyte out of the four of us sitting at the table. Lucky. I didn't necessarily want to watch the Acolyte because I haven't really been super invested in any Star Wars content as of lately. But then everyone in the Discord was <laughs> arguing over and over. Everything changed when we yeah. Acolyte attacked. saying that he liked it. Dan saying it was the worst show ever. Justin the jumping the in and agreeing. Show. Not the worst show ever. But it's pretty bad. Okay, so then I was like, you know what? Let me see what all the fuss is about. I know we were going to be doing this debate. So I wanted to kind of sit in and see what it was going on. And I ended up enjoying the whole show. And the whole time I was watching, I was like, am I missing something here? Because I'm actually having fun. I think it had the best Jedi stuff we've seen in a very long time. Um <laughs> All the lightsaber stuff was really cool, and I enjoyed the story elements as well. Andrew? I'm just doing some research and uh, trying to write down my points to some of the point, the, the remarks they made at their opening statement, like so I don't forget moderator later. slash debater. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think that the Acolyte hits a really good stride, hits a really good middle ground as you get further into the show. I'm not here to tell you that it's a perfect show. I'm not here to tell you that any of the Disney shows, whether they're Marvel or or Star Wars or what have you, are perfect shows. I think there are some that are good, and I think that the Acolyte is good. I enjoyed it, namely the fight scenes, namely the villain. Um, we got to see a lot of cool worlds and a lot of cool references to Star Wars stuff we had never seen in live action before, like the whip from Vernestra's character, never seen in live action, even though apparently it's been in the comics since literally 1985. So thank you, Leslie Headland, for giving us that when you made your show. A great gift to fans to get to see things in live action that we've never seen before. Um, I, I wanna hit on some big points on this show that people have complaints about plot. There's a lot of things people wanna get into to related to this show complaining about forced diversity and changing the star wars lore um I, i'll i'll go ahead and focus on story if you guys want to i'm ready to debate any of these topics that you guys want to bring up um i think that the diversity that's injected into the show is amazing i think it's good to have that in hollywood i think that actors complaints about actors who don't necessarily have the comic books from 1985 memorized or the original movies down to a pat and their new fans, I think it's gatekeeping to tell them that they shouldn't be in Star Wars or to complain about that. I mean, there are new fans of the show trying to enjoy it just like young kids are growing up now and I think that's perfectly fine. So we have a lot to get across, but I want you as you listen to this to focus on the fact that it is Star Wars at its core is a show about hope and optimism. And if you don't go into the show with hope and optimism, you don't go into it giving it a chance, and you give it more dislikes on its trailer on YouTube than likes before you've even seen an iota of the show and just a few small clips from the trailer, then you are not focusing on hope and you are not focusing on the message of Star Wars. Oh! oh. <laughs> what do you guys got other than giggles? I, I'm keeping a level head this entire episode. All right, All right. fair enough. You guys I, can't, I can't promise the same. Well, <laughs> you guys are my friends. We're not going to hate each other. After As of this. right now, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, we, I, we I did this debate once before, and we came out of it fine. We're here again. We're all friends. The yeah. boys uh, we, episode? Justin was not here, but we did oh. this episode with me, Aaron, and Dan. At that time, oh, Aaron had not seen so the show. Much fun. Uh, we sat down, and we were just like, oh, it was the last-minute yeah. decision. We were at the door <laughs> about to leave, and you said, have you seen The Acolyte? And we were like, I was, have I seen The Acolyte? <laughs> I think that was when only four or five, no, five or six episodes had yeah. been out. And... Now we're having a conversation that we've been planning this debate for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So now I'm prepared, whereas last time we were just chatting. Um, and I'm not the most well-versed person in Star Wars lore, but I have done a lot of research. So we'll see if that comes up. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. I think, I think with this debate, we're not going in saying we're the gods of Star Wars. We're going in on how this show Dan's made us feel. Dan speak for Dan's probably the most knowledgeable about Star Wars, just being Ooh, honest. That's um, sad. I have watched a lot of them over the years, uh, but I will not say that I am a Star Wars like knowledge geek, if that's the term that I'm going to pick. But to your point with going into the show with hope and optimism, I feel like that's that's not even a fair point to say because I, me personally, I go into a show expecting to watch good content, and when I don't get that, that in turn makes me review the the show or movie the way i feel so i'm sorry no you're good that's kind of um, what i said so i want to highlight too especially a lot of the things i'm saying are going to be targeted at a broader audience because the show has been canceled and that's a part of the conversation here too so yes but you may feel that way but you're not an accurate sample size so when i when i say that there's evidence in the terms of having more dislikes than likes on youtube and youtube literally has since removed the dislike bar on YouTube. 
Yeah, um, the and amount, the to, for the yeah. amount of like hate coming towards the show that had a good trailer that we both liked. I don't. Yeah, we, I, we, I, no, so the, the trailer, trailer was trailer amazing. Was awesome. Yeah, the trailer, trailer was phenomenal. Unjustified hate in my that of course is my opinion, but that t- comments that I make like that might be targeted at a broader audience and yeah. not telling you that you don't like it for that reason. Yeah, no, I feel like there are people that go in with the expectation that they're actually going to hate something, which I don't think is right. I, I think you should go into something normal, level headed. And watch it and form your own review, which probably more than 50% of the population doesn't form their own review. They just follow what, what they're seeing on the internet, which sucks. Which you should people never, like us exist. never, ever rate something or rating without having seen it. <laughs> that is, That shouldn't even need to be said. Speaking of, how much of it have you seen, Dan? I don't need to hit my head 50 times against the wall to know I hate it. Until I'm bleeding on the oh, floor. Oh, so you haven't but, watched all but, of the material that we're talking but about? But genuinely, today? for the audience, though, how much of it have you seen? Because I don't know. Four episodes. 32 okay. seasons. That's half. <laughs> and see, Aaron's, Aaron's a little stronger on this point, I think, than I am. I think if you're four, four or five episodes in the show and you don't like it, you should be allowed to stop watching it. I think it's I don't, a three-episode run. If you don't like it after that, I, I think that's you fair. Kind of I'm 42 years old. I agree. I have that. a limited yeah. amount of time yeah, left in my lifespan oh, before I die. So, <laughs> so this is where I have to like itemize and and prioritize what I'm going to watch and what Hold I'm on. not. Shout out to How this old man are you? looking 42. like he looks the like answer to life, the mysteries in the universe. Are you are you watching any other shows this year? He's like, I can't watch things. Bro, are you like, because like, I don't have yeah, that much longer actually, left. What do you want he, he's do? bathing in a panther tank or I'm something. Gonna, I, I'm really interested in the next one, the next Star Wars. So I would like to point out that my the threshold. Next one's the best one. So the, <laughs> my threshold for Star Wars enjoyment is lower than the average fan. I'm going to list a couple of series that I actually enjoyed. The Mandalorian. All That's seasons. Not, well, okay. The, <laughs> wow, you're in the minority. Oh, you enjoyed the most highly piece of Disney oh, content wait. in the last 20 years. The like, where's of, this going? The Book of Boba Fett. I enjoyed it. The Mandalorian point, point two. Obi-Wan Kenobi. I enjoyed. Ahsoka. I enjoyed. Andor. I enjoyed. I enjoy the animated series. I love Disney Star Wars. I'm one of the rare people that actually did. A lot of my friends stopped watching after Andor. They couldn't stand the Andor. So I'm going to point out that my dislike for Acolyte is not based on the fact that I hate Disney. It's the fact that Acolyte was consistently a poor production compared to those other IPs that, frankly, were better produced. It was better in every way. Even Ahsoka had twice as much minutes watched in its final finale than uh, than, than Acolyte. By the way, how does that make it better produced? Like, what did you not like about the Acolyte? Before you answer that question, I do want to hit, while we're talking about the Nielsen ratings for the show, there was less viewership minutes on Book of Boba Fett than there was on The Acolyte. So people calling it the lowest watched show, the first, the ratings here are for the first two episodes, or the first episode, there's more minutes watched on. Do you know how Nielsen does its rating system, how it actually does it? I feel like I've heard this before from another podcast, but you can enlighten me. Okay, so one, it they they poll a regular Americans, American audience only. Number two, it doesn't go by episode; it goes by series for that week. So with streaming services, it's the stream series for that week is what they count as how many minutes watched. Well, the other thing that makes it super inaccurate for streaming is. Minutes watch aren't necessarily minutes watched because lots of people leave stuff on streaming mm-hmm. without actually paying attention to it. So it's minutes played rather than necessarily mm-hmm. minutes watched. There's no way to track if yeah. somebody's in the other room doing laundry. And so that's why I prefer Illuminate, but that's another debate altogether. But Aaron, your question for... Yeah, so Dan, what, what don't you like about the Acolyte? Uh, there's a bunch of different routes that you can go there, but you talked about how it was just a worse production than Ahsoka, than Mandalorian. Let's start there, okay? How was the Accolade a worse production than the other Disney Plus shows that you did enjoy? I'm going to keep it civil because I don't want to attack people or be seen as attacking people because people be toxic right now and really yeah. the, the volcano is ready to erupt. So I'm not going to target any particular individual. But I will say that overall, if the protagonist can't make up her mind about what she wants to do throughout the throughout the entire episode, let alone the entire series, and she just makes whims up, whatever she does is what she does because the writers need it to happen at that moment. That is lazy writing. And I'm just gonna focus down on the writing first. There was no writing. It was, 
it was like a role playing game that everyone was rolling the dice like d20 let's figure out what we're going to do today and it's whatever the guy is metagaming in the back decides what he wants to do what direction the plot was going to go for that episode but in reality it was a meandering mess there was no cohesion of story there was no overall arc it was just we're going to make the jedi look bad and we're going to make the sith look good and in the end the those witches just look like psychopaths who ended up committing suicide by Jedi. At the end, they failed in the very effort they did. I, I cannot go into too much more without... It, it just was I mean, I, I, my perspective is that the witches died protecting the children that they created. By Attempting the, to protect the children they created. But by, like, wasn't it like... Uh, what's her face? Uh, Carrie Ann Moss, her character. Indara. Indara. Wasn't it right when she saved in a sense the wookie jedi and then all of the witches just fell down and died so like how is that saving their clan if they just died because the jedi saved another jedi it literally made no sense in that sequence so the 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 key the the key to like the sequence at the end is like in the end of the episode three or like the end, the end of, the, of the, the the end of the show because show you've seen the whole show right yeah so you're yeah. talking about the last episode when she's fighting when uh um, soul um, is fighting a, a no 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 the the uh the episode seven when it was kind of like episode seven is kind of like the retelling of episode three both mm -hmm. flashback episodes yeah and in episode seven is when you actually see a little bit more of what happened in episode three right from the Jedi's perspective, yeah, from Soul's perspective. So, like, yeah. the Wookiee gets uh, mind controlled by one of the witches, and he just starts going at it. And then, like, uh, Carrie and Moss character, which like Indara, she ends up retrieving his mind back. I guess is what you would call it. And yeah. at that moment, I mean, if, unless I'm thinking completely oh, wrong, okay. that's when all the witches fall. So they don't. Besides With the two mothers per se none of the other witches really do anything to save the two twins. Wouldn't that just be similar to people expending a lot of force energy, like Luke force projecting himself in The Last Jedi? Like, wouldn't that be similar to them expending all their energy trying to do this difficult task of controlling the mind of presumably a powerful Jedi, a Wookiee Jedi? Um, and then when they're overpowered by Indara, like their collapse? I know, but like, that's, that's what, probably at least 20 women? 20, no, they said there was 50 women. So let's take out the two mothers in this case. So that's 48 total women versus one Jedi and Carrie Ann Moss's character, Indara. They, 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 they never showed it in a sense where it felt like all 48 of them were projecting their minds into the Wookiee Jedi. They portrayed it as one or both of the mothers. No, no, no. It was just one, the, uh, the, the lighter-skinned one, because the other one had already the been killed by one. Soul. The alien one. Yeah. The other the one's other... Anasea. I don't, I'm not familiar with the other mother's name. Yeah, Anasea the names are hard for me to remember. The <laughs> main mother. Star Wars names in general are hard for me to remember, besides main characters, honestly. But uh, uh, Soul had already killed the main introduced mother. A Anasea. The other one then projected herself onto the Wookiee Jedi. And then after that, it, it, doesn't, incl it doesn't inclinate that like all of the other women witches were projecting themselves on them too because they were actually in their physical form whereas the the, the main alien one <laughs> so was kind of like almost like going into that mist form just like the other woman was one thing that i really like about this show and that i like about the story i'll get into overarching what the arc is because dan said it has no arc and i do want to talk about the arc that i believe exists in the story and that i can see in the story but one thing that i like about the show in general is that it takes Star Wars lore and doesn't over-explain it, something that I think a lot of fans complain about when they introduce midichlorians in the prequels. They introduce elements of the lore that I didn't even know were included until watching... Uh, there's a video, you can check this out, on another YouTube page called Star Wars Explained. They do all of the uh, Easter eggs from Star Wars. And to the point of your your point about the show seeming to be lazy and not having a lot of care, basically saying it's AI-generated... I they didn't say it was AI-generated. Ad hominem much, my yeah, man! You said, there, you said there was no care in the story. Is that an accurate way to... It was lazy sum? writing, was so, my words. To specifically reiterate your exact unplagiarized, or perfectly plagiarized words, <laughs> lazy writing, there are, in this video, they, they dictate 75 examples of Easter eggs to previously written Star Wars materials, whether it be movies, Clone Wars, other shows like Ahsoka, whether it be comic books, whether it be video games, 
all kinds of cool stuff like bleeding the Star Wars crystal that used to be a Sith rite of passage. I can tell you cool stuff that I learned from this video that made me like the show even more. And I think that Aaron would probably feel the same. I'll show you the video after if you haven't seen it. But that to me is not lazy writing. That to me is Leslie Headland showing that she loves the story. When the first restaurant they open up, this planet that we've never seen depicted in Star Wars before, is in some random other High Republic book or story where it says like, this planet's name and noodles, like a specific dish that comes from this planet. She drew the name from this random dish and, and showed us that planet that we had never seen before. She's including fun stuff in making the story, like in, in making the story so that there's ties. Like the High Republic era has Jedi's littered throughout the galaxy. So we have Indara posted here and a Jedi comes to find, or, or not a Jedi, but um, May comes to find her there to attack her. So mm. what I see is a lot of care and a lot of hidden details that maybe I don't understand these witches yet, but there, well, I never will now because we'll never get a second season. <laughs> but there's, there's the thing about this story overall, when you talk about not having a story, when you talk about the plot not being good, is that it's a mystery and people weren't letting the mystery unfold long enough. People weren't giving it enough of a chance. It's a great mystery when you watch it. There's all these hidden mm -hmm. details that make for great Easter eggs. Um, if you know these things, there's great things. I, like I said, they don't over explain. So they're not sitting there saying, we're going to get your M count. Mm -hmm. And count as midichlorians. Midichlorians are these cells in your bloods that are tied to how strong you are with the force. They're not doing that. They say M count because it's stuff that you don't necessarily need to know. You don't necessarily need to know why this witch has died. They visually showed you that they died. So there, like, there it, it might it, be tied it into doesn't it? It just it's plot convenience in this sense because gimmicky. Why else would it make? Tell me why all of the witches died. Besides, like. Like, tell me why that makes sense with the story, other than plot Maybe think of it like those witches were like the pad ones. Like, maybe it's a few pad ones. Yeah, but the pad ones were, they, the pad ones were actually killed. Like, you saw yeah. Anakin go in weak. there yeah, to kill exactly. them. exactly. So maybe that's the same scenario here, just a different, like, species of power. So we're just supposed to, so we're just supposed to assume that Carrion Moss's Indara was trying to save the Wookiee Jedi, and then they proceeded to mind kill all of the rest of the 48 women witches i'm not presuming to under to, to explain what exactly they were trying to say i'm just saying that there are explanations for it and if i sat here and gave you 100 examples of plot convenience in star wars before this would you be able to explain to or, me why those weren't any examples show. didn't bother you john there, wick dude there, there's there's plot convenience in everything i'll admit <laughs> yeah, that yeah this but, is one thing but, in the and it's but, very, fairly there is plot convenience in cinema as a whole mm -hmm. there's plot convenience in cinema as a whole regardless of what medium there are some movies and shows that do it absolutely well, but there is plot convenience in everything. It's a difference of plot convenience for plot convenience sake, plot convenience that actually works with the story and doesn't ruin the entire experience of watching a show or a movie. Why, did, say, why did this Master Jedi's powers being stronger than this group of witches, why did that take you out of the story so much? Well, I don't even think other scenarios like that haven't necessarily. I, I don't think that's the case. I literally just don't know why all these other women just fell to the ground to their death. Because they had to for the sake of the story. Besides that, I have no other reason. But or maybe you... like Andrew explained, maybe we haven't gotten there yet. Do but we know... never will, and they were never going to explain it. They might say they will, but that's you bullshit. Can't, you but can't, how do you, you know? You can, you can absolutely not say they would never explain it, because that's yeah. a guess. How would you say they would explain it? That's, I just gave. Example. I don't. How would that make sense? How, where Where are these examples that, that you're pulling from? To us determining on if this was a good show or bad show. So you're by telling speculating me speculating what would have happened in season. Let me two. Let me put it in plain terms for you, John Wick. All right, <laughs> he's he's fighting fifty men. All right, he kills two men. Forty eight other men just fall to the ground. What happens there? Plot convenience. That's not the there's, same because it's they're the not, same exact thing. No, it's a different method of killing. Yeah, that's in it's the not, real world. He no, it's have not psychic powers. Oh, the real world. Yeah, like he doesn't have psychic so what powers, happens so everyone here? Everyone does just drop dead. That's my thing. It's but like why he, is that one point? What that's what not the one. On? There's like, many points. Okay, explain. Like, what's a big arcing problem that you had with with the story? That's I the feel worst like, episode for sure. No, the worst episode is the witch chant one. Yeah, episode three. Oh yeah, episode seven shows it, but episode three is where they actually died. Too. I thought seven was far better. Seven, seven, that's better than three. Seven was one of my favorite episodes. Seven three, was that's one of crazy. The three is watched ones in the whole thing. It still was only half of Ahsoka, but we won't get to that. Seven was one of the most watched ones. Seven episode seven, it spiked back up. It, well, when I say spiked, it started out strong, but if you watch the charts, it really let's let's talk about elements of the plot and story here. So what I see as an arcing storyline is you have two young girls who have opposing goals. 
One wanted to be a Jedi, and one now wants to take vengeance for the death. Okay, but wait one second. We'll go with that. Let's explore that. So she suddenly goes, I'm going to kill you. Like out of the blue, she wants to kill her sister. That just a minute before she was, and then burns a, a rock castle to the ground. She didn't, you, that's because you didn't watch the show. But you know, the, can you want me to explain it? Can you want me to explain what happens in the episode? Can explain it to me. <laughs> All right, which episode so, are you referring to? Three? This is seven. Seven. So in three, they show that she lights her notebook on fire and then starts mm -hmm. a fire, but they show from the other side of the door. If you watch the whole show, you would see that she is an eight-year-old child who lit the book on fire, didn't expect it to catch fire so fast. She dropped it. Overreacts. She overreacts and drops it to the ground where it catches fire. Hold on a second. Hold, Dan. Just well, take a deep breath and write in your notes, please, because I'm still explaining. I, I love you for one minute. I'm going to kill you in the next. The convenience. You're, you're, you're not, not even around young children very often, are you, but, Dan? But also you're not even <laughs> listening because she wasn't trying to kill her. She mistakenly dropped something. She was trying to burn her notebook, but there's minerals on the ground because they say that the, they say earlier in the show that this isn't like an old mining facility. So when she drops the notebook accidentally, it starts a fire. You can see a look of fear and confusion on her face because she did not expect this to happen at all. She did not try to burn down the whole house of her family and kill her sister. She ran away because it erupted in a flame that blocked the door. It's a mistake. And I don't know why you're looking smugly at me when this is something you didn't know that I'm teaching you about. I the did show. know that. My point is, I actually watched synopsis of the show, which was far more interesting than the show, which dragged. Dan, come on. But <laughs> here's yeah, you can't. I've actually but, watched synopsis. And, you, and there's the other thing. How much that. Star Wars theory have you watched? Go ahead and just finish your sentence because I don't how know how much, to give you a number. How much Star Wars theory have you Dan, watched? Dan, this is yeah. I don't know has, how it relates to this. He has openly show. hated on a, on acolyte and has exposed. Who is he? Star, Star Wars, Wars theory. theory. I think that you. Oh, he's talking about a channel. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah, talking, I, didn't, wait, I said Star, Star Wars Explained. Yeah, I don't think oh. he's seen Star Wars Theory. He hasn't seen, he, he said Star Wars Theory? He said Star Wars Explained. Explained. Oh, no, yeah, it's probably like <laughs> a different channel, yeah. So, Star where, Wars where are we going? Because yeah, yeah, I, 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 I just explained how that she didn't have that shift. So does that make a difference to you or no? No, because the whole <laughs> thing is... So, lots like of red facts won't... My, uh, <laughs> my thing with that is like... What do you mean? Wait, oh, hold on. No, no, no. What do you mean by it's dreadful? Because you dreadful. just because I just explained to you how you were wrong, and then you just go, it's dreadful. That's, I that's... know what I like, and I know what I don't like. I'm not telling you what you have to Child like. Child actors who are superior in their acting ability than the adult actors really are terrible. But there, there's a hilarious meme that I found where it shows Amanda Stenberg's various expressions throughout the entire episode. And we're gonna get into it now, because you know what? Amanda Stenberg can't do anything wrong, but we're gonna do it anyway. Says who? Uh, says Amanda Stenberg, who made a diss track. I've never heard her say that. She made a diss track? She made a diss track. You never saw the diss track? <laughs> no. She did a rapping, twerking diss track calling anyone who hated the Acolyte racist bigots. Yes. And she wondered why the show failed. That was made after the show. No, it was made well, it was, during. it was made after the show had one of the lowest ratings of any Star Wars content. But also, but still, I'm, I mean, like making that—that's. I'm not. I'm not here to. Do. I'm not here to defend what she did. I'm here to def to talk about the actual the show. Right. So, <laughs> and the show was already failing by then, and it wasn't because. Exactly. And it was so that not so then it had nothing to do with hated it, but because it yeah. was terrible, and most people are are in agreement. They didn't enjoy the show. Okay, I'm going to talk to the camera for a second. Yeah. You're going to hear Dan say a lot that this show is terrible. And that it's bad, and, and that it was awful. Say that he thinks it's great. But you're not going to hear him give reasons <laughs> that I won't be able to refute. And I'll eat crow if he does. Is that a phrase? Yeah, I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he I, just said it. Eat crow, one crow, uh, one crow billion. Like the but bird. I'm looking for reasons that I can't defend against as to why the story was so bad. Because it's a matter of taste. But you, you, you that's said what that the, I just said you were going to do. The very first see, question no. that I asked about was production. Why was this production not as good? And In my eyes... Get, you immediately rabbit hold down to one scene about how the witches dropped dead. No, I did not. No, that was did. just... No, he didn't. Okay. And then I mean, we focused kept on... warning me there. I'm not gonna and lie. then we're going to just keep what? focusing on that as if that makes no, no, no. the look, show look, great if that I, one scene can damn, be explained. We're, we're, ready to, we're ready to move on. We loosely talked about some of the character points and all that. I originally asked about the production. Mm -hmm. What about this production? And I not... told you. Damn, let me finish my sentence. <laughs> what? This was always going to be the most heated one. <laughs> what about this production isn't as good as the Acolyte, the Mandalorian, and all that? Now, let me define production first. So we're actually talking about the same thing here. 
when I'm thinking of production, I'm thinking about the actual creativity and showmanship of the camera angles, the quality of set locations, the the character design, all of these aspects that go into the, you're, actually you're making the show. Production. So are you Correct. talking about that or are you solely I'm talking about talking the writing? About all of the production as a whole has to be taken in, including music, acting, exactly. sound effects, and writing. So story out of it right now. We're getting rid of story. What about the production did you not like? So you're talking about the visuals. The visual. Camera work, color grade, all that technical Set stuff. design. Correct. Set design. Okay. Correct. You're the guys who do okay. that. I will do that. Well, you do it so, better than so us. So basically you're saying you're <laughs> only... CGI. CGI. You're the only... CGI element. <laughs> that's what I do. Hold on one second. So Dan, you're saying the only problem with this was the story for you. No, that's not the only problem. Then please answer my question. The acting. Okay. What about the acting? Amanda Slint, but I'm, I'm going to get into it, and I know there are people out there who just love her, and she's a black woman. And so I'm a white guy, so I'm immediately the villain here. You're, okay, let's just say... You're projecting what, that onto yourself. Let's just, let's just say no, you're, but that is how it has let, been in this whole debate. Let's you just guys say, been reading this online, I, I, it has real... And you even said it right at the beginning. You said that it was largely an anti-woke, woke kind of debate. And I hate when it's framed that way because it makes anyone who hates Acolyte immediately a bigot. Yeah. Well, let's, but then you're, you're first. And then I have to say that in order to protect my own reputation and my business. No, I mean, he's, he's not wrong. And I'm not wrong on this. I'm going to double down on it 100%, 1,000%. I will okay. continue. So I'm what, not backing down so on this. So what was this. wrong with her acting? It's so wooden. It, that's the word I was going to use. Now. dead <laughs> wooden. There is a hilarious meme. Perhaps you guys can look it up where it shows her in different scenes in the ep in various scenes in the epi all the episodes not even just one episode no i saw them and it's from the <laughs> the identical camera angle and the identical facial expression but there's the scene changes behind her and it shows her this is her angry face this is her happy face this is her intense face this is her scared face she's not a good actress she twerks better than she acts i'm sorry she did a diss track. That's where you're going to get the comments. Like no, you're not, about. <laughs> you gotta no. Be careful with that. Yeah. But no, I'm sorry. Her dancing routine and her diss track was more creative than her acting in that movie. Now, in this series. And I don't know if it's, you can hawk it up to directors, maybe over directing her. I don't know. She did have a challenging time on that. I mean, this so, challenge. I liked her a lot in Talk to Me. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Just I, gonna... I really want to watch that, but. So I'm sure she has talent. Her. I'm not I, saying that, but in this series, in this series, yeah. she's unwatchable. I can't. It was so boring. I disagree strongly on unwatchable. I don't I I will say that personally, it's not my favorite thing when shows and movies have the same actor play a twin because yeah. it feels a little bit lazy. It feels like you're getting like two for, two one, for one with yeah. your actor. Um and I, I just don't love it because I feel like a lot of times I can see it happening with like the mm -hmm. over the shoulder angles and yeah, then I can yeah. see where you the know side where you have the flip. They did a phenomenal job of blood. It looks great. Yeah. It looks great. But I just feel like they did it, a fantastic You, just, me, you just, know it, what they did. It's one to of those real it. world things where the reason I'm not a fan of it is the real world angle. It's like it's got me looking for it now. Yeah. But I I didn't watch this thinking she was unwatchable. I don't think it's the best performance I've ever seen. I don't think it's the best performance in the Star Wars universe, but um, I thought the characters and the character motivations were, were strong and interesting. I thought it was cool that the way they flipped motivations. I thought also something I respected a lot from, I, reading and researching this more and more, I have so much love and respect for Leslie Headland as a creator because she was citing all these awesome references for her motivation for she? different things. She's, she's the showrunner creator for Acolyte. So she said that um, the mind wipe at the end of the series, wiping um, May's mind was her, like uh, she felt like homage to Jason Bourne because mm. she was looking forward to starting off season two with this character who had these powers that she didn't understand because she had lost her memory of having force abilities and also like stepping into this world with the Jedi where she has lost her memories. So I thought she had a lot of cool motivations. The ending scene with uh, Manny Jacinto next to Amanda Stenberg, she referenced uh, Fight Club, the end, like looking hopefully on as like the world is destroyed. Um, uh, she had a lot of cool references like that to pay homage to famous storytelling. And then with her characters as well, I thought she did a lot of really interesting things. So in is terms referencing of... other better stories than the story there make the story good? Is that what you're saying? I think... I, I, that's one of the Dan, I don't I think you're even say. trying to <laughs> to have like no, a, I mean, a he reasonable has a, discourse. He has a good point. She's referencing a lot of other great cinema, which is cool. 
but that doesn't. Why are they? Right. Why are they? I'm talking about the why. Are, I'm, I'm talking why are they also detracting from Star Wars as a whole? How? Yeah, that's how, good. How? How what? Mundi. How what? Let me talk about that. Kaidi Mundi. So I did research on this. Kaidi Mundi's original birthday and the lifespan of his species were never documented in any case. That's not the issue at all. That's not the issue. <laughs> so, the fact that an entire group of Jedi got murdered. And then there's a huge cover up, and now he's a bad guy. Nobody saw the... them. Nobody saw. Nobody saw uh, the stranger of, who lived. Because yeah. of mind wipe. Nope. Well, yeah. The, well, well, anyone that's who, part of it for Osha. Because of anyone who knew about because of a clear race. plot convenience that was never else. introduced in Star Wars ever. Mind wipe has never been introduced in Star Wars ever. Not in the movies. Not Jedi. Doesn't doesn't matter. Right. It just has to be introduced in canon. So it's a new thing. So, yeah. So, so nothing new can happen in a new Star Wars show. Like not, hasn't new stuff can happen. Content. But when you're making a show that predates the prequels, the originals, and the sequels, that's a huge issue that people are just overlooking for the sake of before? calling us the why haters. Did they do it why, since? why didn't they do what was it again? Mind uh, wipe. Mind wiping. Um, so look, so they're just saying they mind have... wipe is cool. I I really. Why is it I, such a leap for you guys from Obi Wan manipulating somebody's mind to mind wiping or reading somebody's no, no, mind? No, no, no. It's not a leap. I I think mind wipe should be in the Star Wars universe. It's it just is. the way they did it to save all of the absolute dog shit they did in the Acolyte from prob from problem making in Phantom Menace and the prequels but and the original but it sequels makes problems anyway because now mind wiping could have been really useful in a lot of other cases it could have been used in almost every damn movie so, so i yeah, yeah I, but other siths can save people from dying why haven't they done that every single time a sith has died isn't there also like force on that they never show that Palpatine says it in the prequels, but it it's was never just a shown hook to get it's, out to the to acolyte rough. is the one thing that when us as Cinema 3D watched the trailer. We loved it. We were super excited because we really thought Plagueis was going to be in it. And he was, which is absolute bullshit. Uh, Wait, throw bullshit off, that Plagueis was in the Throw Acolyte? off cameo, just like Yoda. Throw off cameo. That's what Disney loves to do nowadays. But um, service. I would, service. I would disagree because it was there for a split second at the end. It didn't necessarily like, they didn't force it into the story. They just set up storylines that yeah. could happen in the about next season. Oh. Yoda, not Plagueis. Yeah, yeah. Plagueis is in and there. Even, and even Plagueis. Yeah, that could be for season two. They're both. Like, I'm sure they're, they're both just both two. characters yeah, but, that like, are part of this big universe as a whole. But instead of taking over this season or being in there for one episode that felt gimmicky, like a so, Spider-Man uh, uh, cameo, <laughs> they're they're setting up future storylines just like <laughs> any show does. So I, I, yeah, that's my thing. What's the problem with Soldier Boy and Boy season four? I don't want to talk about the boys right now. It's going to be way it's too. It's getting shit. way too off track. It's from, the same this shit. This is already all over the place. If exactly. you're talking about the boys, it's this is this is him. exactly how it is, though. It's the same shit. So why are you not okay with Soldier Boy, but you're okay with Yoda and and Plagueis? Because it's the same. Can the I second or or last episode? They tease them for two seconds. Soldier Boy is whereas something that's in, happened in the past. The writers conveniently just had them go to sleep. Happened in the past. Yoda, from what we have seen, has been in the future only. We haven't seen anything before the actual. This new straight? show. No, 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 no. This is Can so I hard. get this straight? Wait one second. Are you guys like boys fans? You're really into the boys, right? I like the boys. We like the okay, boys. Yeah, so we... you know the lore, and the lore is valuable to you. And you're mad at what? No, because... No, 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 no. Because What are you mad at? The original can, source material... Can we, can we not... <laughs> oh, you don't want to do this. No, no we're going to no, no, explore no. this. We have to reference kind of other cinema if we're going to get this okay. debate done. So, All right. are you guys... Andrew's going to answer. Okay. Andrew's going to answer. So but you got to let him talk. What? you got to let him talk. Before I answer, I want to beg you not to interrupt us going, no, 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 because that doesn't even let... You haven't even heard what we're going to talk about. So... The, the character of Soldier Boy is incredibly different from the comics, and I'm happy about that. You're, what you're talking about is that you probably haven't read the boys' comics, right? So you don't under, understand the. I'd have to explain a lot to you, but the I'm happy that they changed him. We're talking about complaints specifically with the show, not them differing from the lore in the comics. The Sol Soldier Boy is like a throwaway character. He's made way more serious, and way better in the show. So that's that's a non-starter. That point makes no sense. Yeah. So it's not, it has nothing to do with the lore of the show. Yes. Um. But what were what was the point that we were trying to get to? I don't even remember. Something about Soldier Boy. I and, was saying. No, no, then we moved on. I don't want to talk about the boys. Then we moved on. No, I was saying it's it's the cameo essence okay, so of Yoda and Plagueis. Cameo. So, K, so Plagueis is not a throwaway cameo, right? So in the, I think it's the Phantom Menace, there's a line where, it might, actually it's probably like Attack of the Clones or whatever. No, it's but Revenge of the Sith. There's a line where Darth Plagueis Sidious, Sidious says that Darth Plagueis yeah. could like 
right. manipulate midichlorians to create yeah. life. Yeah. So if you now go back to the Acolyte, which is 100 years pr prior to Phantom Menace, you can see the avergence being used to create life and Darth Plagueis being in a vicinity of people to become aware of this knowledge. So it ties into the overall Star Wars lore and story in explaining how Plagueis got the information of how to manipulate midichlorians to create life. It literally has reason to be in there. Like... Is that, if I explain it that way, does is that like help you make feel better about it being shoehorned in there? But when it's shown in the show, we see Plagueis in the same vicinity of Kamir. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, well, you can just call him the Stranger. That's a fake name. That's his name. He, the, he's been dubbed the Stranger. The Stranger or Darth Teeth. <laughs> Darth Teeth. So he's shown you... in the vicinity of Darth Teeth mm -hmm. and Osha mm -hmm. at the end. That's where the cameo happens. So we're just again supposed to assume that Darth Plagueis was also with. The witches, 16 years prior. Not with the witches. I'd assume he's with Kimir. Or the stranger. So yeah. Kimir was it's around the they're witches to place. create Osha and May? She, they're, They've from left. my understanding, they were on a different planet or location than where the yeah. witches were. I think they left, so they Osha, left Dock, or they're at a different location far but away. Your, yeah. your point was that Darth Plagueis, obviously, is the only one in the Star Wars canon that has been able to manipulate life in that sense. So if that's your point, he created Osha and May, which means he had no. to be... No, no, that's not my point. My, okay. Um, my point is that Darth Plagueis, you said Darth Plagueis and Yoda are put in shoehorn cameos that annoys yes, you, yes, right? Yes. My point is Darth Yoda probably in there for season two because it's the very end. And that's uh, probably... Makes sense for a Jedi Master to go talk to Yoda at the end of a problem. Probably Vanessa, I think because her name is Ma Master at one point. And then the cameo for Plagueis, I was explaining, is probably to tie into how he learned about how to manipulate midichlorians to create life, because that's what Anasea did. Anasea manipulated the, the virgins from the Force to create life. She So people are also complaining that Anakin is supposed to be the first immaculate conception of the Force, but he still is. He That's not touched, because he was created purely by the Force, whereas Ocean and May were created by Force witches, a sect that we hadn't seen before, although witches have existed in Star Wars for years and years, um, a sect of witches, manipulating a virgins in the force, which is a powerful spot. Another concept that has been in Star Wars canon for years and years, because it's in um, uh, the second original movie and it's in, um, it's on Dagobah, it's all over the place. Sorry. Sorry. It's on Dagobah and it's on uh, the planet with uh, huh? The Last Jedi, I think, where Rey oh, is. Oh. So she, the, the witches manipulated the force convergence to for them to create life. It, it didn't happen immaculately. They were involved in creating the life, right? So that's not touched. And that and that lore isn't touched. Every, you guys, all your pristine lore is still pristine and unsmudged. Does that, do all those explanations help like clear up? It's just it's not like overtly said in there because those little details are supposed to be for people who care about little details. Those people who care about the little details are supposed to be the people who know the information that explains it. How much mental gymnastics did you have to do? watch it on youtube on the car way over here that's yeah, all it, it took it, no all it took. right now that whole <laughs> convoluted explanation just to force it to work demonstrates it, right there why it doesn't work as a it, plot it, if you have to go through that much work to explain something but people love the fact that they never had yeah that i me, like it when, general when we're people we love it when shows show us and don't tell us all of the information in the dialogue, you I know, and that, that they hint at all this stuff, that they're not just explaining it all to you. That's good writing. That's good storytelling. Not in the show, though. What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, why? There's other forms of content that actually show, don't tell. That's done way better than the show. But I'm explaining. I never, I, I yeah, was never shown anything that I could understand. other content that's better doesn't make this bad. You have stuff here that you were supposed to I read. do. It's just because just it's, it's, it's... They don't want you to read it, by to, the way, just because they want to harp on we, this. No, actually, we do want you to read it because you guys haven't really given us much of reason because we haven't had a to actually to debate. Everything you guys have been saying has been strictly your opinions and so in terms of yours. discretion of story. Yeah, and yours has been, well, this is why you're wrong. We like it. I got some. No, it hasn't. No, yeah, it has. Has. no, yeah, it has. He's been talking about the lore that you guys have been saying it hasn't been faithful to you. I'm talking about quotes, direct quotes that, from but... previous movies. I'm talking about lore from comic books. I'm talking about video games. I'm talking we, about established canon. We very that. rarely today have been like, oh, we like this part because of our feelings. Okay, not That's once. Cool. I, I can't. Yeah, we, we have talked did, about wait, our I mean, favorite. When did I say that? Show, anyways. When did I say that? I was talking about like 
pretty much factual. So I never said I feel this way. Okay. Well, is, what, is, we, this is this is this is this is have the op they actually have. I just want to say that I'll like, let you guys talk. So your your points. I don't even know what points you want me to say. Well, because Dan, I, there's nothing that fast. we can say that you guys are going. You guys just can call it like, oh, that's the way you feel. Like this is the way we feel. Back Give us the opportunity. We feel like this. have have hope. Have faith. Yeah. Give us the opportunity. Why don't you have hope in that there's other opinions that are actually oh, come on, damn it. Dude, I'm See, that's the thing. You're, you're trying to let you fucking talk. Yeah, well, I'm trying to let you, you fucking talk. tell me what you're saying, too. Okay, do you want me to say my side, then, and you I, don't want to talk? Just say your I thing. plenty of chances to say your side, Andrew. Let's let us styles talk for a second, okay? Then talk. Okay. I'm begging you to. Facts. Let's talk about facts. My faith and hope in humanity has been reaffirmed by the fact that they didn't watch this show. Facts. I don't know how that's related to uh, uh, this being a good show or not. Because people in general have taste. And if more people hate something than like something or dislike it to the point where they're so uninterested that it fails miserably and numbers are indicating that, then- But the numbers indicate that people were hating on the show before even giving it a chance. That doesn't matter. I can... The numbers at the end show that they still but hate it. But you don't it. think that that hate beforehand had any Influence on yes, the hate during? I, uh, yes, I actually think it actually helped the show because people were talking about it. And we have discussed this. There's no such thing as bad publicity. And so here are some numbers that you guys really don't want me to say. Apparently. I want you to read the numbers. Well, then let me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's the reason the show was canceled. The show was far, and this is from Forbes magazine. The show was far too expensive and did not draw big enough numbers to justify the cost. The show was far too expensive and did not receive enough critical acclaim and widespread fan support. Both of these factors include a common theme. The Acolyte simply cost far, far too much, and that investment wasn't met with huge viewership numbers like The Mandalorian or critical acclaim like Andor. The Acolyte cost far more and performed far worse than any other Disney Plus Star Wars series, and this is why it was canceled. If it had been hugely popular, with viewership numbers closer to The Mandalorian than to Andor, it almost certainly would have been renewed. Andor I, got renewed? Why did Andor get renewed? Do you know the contractual agreement behind Andor? 12 episodes. However, they were contracted for 24 episodes. They are now contractually obligated to make another season. Because no one's ever gotten out, out of a contract. contract. That was good. Yeah, especially not Disney. <laughs> I will say this, though. Andor still performed better than Acolyte. Who, just barely. Well, what do you mean? Who's, who's contracted? Like, Disney contracted with the actors? To, or the showrunner to make the episodes with them? Yeah. So that's, that, that contract is to keep the, the, those people coming back. Disney can... Okay, I got more numbers for you to defend Andor. Just an answer to your question. Okay, The Acolyte is the second most expensive show on the list. $180 million. After Andor... It shows. It's awesome. Tons of lightsaber fights. Andor had $250 million. But that's only the total spent. The Acolyte cost a whopping $671,641 per minute to produce. Andor cost just $529,661, about $150,000 less per minute, thanks to its longer meteor episodes and 12-episode count. So we're talking about tons of millions of dollars on either show either. And way. that's what it comes down to, my friends. Disney was losing money on Acolyte, and it canceled it because no one was watching it. You don't think they've lost money on... And Tons of other sh Marvel shows, too. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't also get renewed. I'm going with this. I think all these shows are losing money. I mean, I don't think Loki's making a bunch of money. Yeah. And yet Andor made a, twice as much viewership as Acolyte. And here's the point. Acolyte just bombed. It was a bomb. Okay, but my main issue is with why it bombed. And my main issue is with... Because all the bigots hated on it. Dude, if you could go five minutes without putting words in my mouth, I would appreciate it. You put words in my mouth, my dude. I, mis I misquoted you, and then I changed it to what you wanted me to change it to. Uh, it's not. I promise it wasn't sinister. Um, my main issue is with the fact that I think the show was good, and you're saying it's bad. Can we talk about... And I don't want to get caught in like this, this echo chamber cycle, this trap, this circle. I want to talk about why the show was bad and why people didn't watch it. Like, what was... I want to talk about what was bad with the show. That's what I, I feel like. Yeah, that's they, what I want to talk yeah. about. All right, this guy. I'll tell you a couple of my gripes with the okay. show. Okay. Yes. One of my main things, which I think has already been brought up, is the constant switch on character ideologies throughout the show. 
you can call it. I, I, here's the thing that makes it hard because people are going to be like, oh, no, if I was in that situation, I would do the same thing. When you're in an eight episode run of a show where all the episodes claim to be 30 minutes, but they're really 20 because there's 10 minutes of credits. You're only working with 20 minutes per episode for eight episodes and you got two flashbacks. So you're really only working with six episodes with the main actress. All right. Let's call it that. She may. May. So I do want to cut and just say that the character is still in those two episodes. It's just played by a different actors. Just young, young versions. Yeah. Um, May starts out. She wants revenge against the Jedi. Then she goes, wait, my boss is the one who wants revenge against the Jedi. So I don't actually want revenge against the Jedi. I'm going to go find my sister and reconnect. Then she didn't know her she, sister was alive. Okay. And she finds out she's alive. Cool. Then oh, <laughs> you found out your sister who you loved and now we're and you and now you don't want to find out more about them. Or uh, I'll, just, I'll just all about I'll just take notes. Go yeah. ahead. Cool. So she finds out her boss wants or she knows her boss wants revenge, that it's really him trying to get her to do stuff for him. Why is that a no? You didn't want Finish to talking. You. Finish talking. No, I'm I'm asking you now. I'm not you're not interrupting. She wants the revenge against them because the Jedi showed up and then her whole family died. So she does want revenge against them. It's not just the stranger's motivation. She wanted to kill those specific four Jedi. So then why does she switch up and say, I want to reconnect with her? She found sister. out her sister was alive. When she but right before she goes to Kalnaka, um, is when she's grappling with her feelings, which is grappling with your feelings between the light and the dark is a common theme through every single fucking Star Wars story ever told. Yeah. It's for Anakin, it's for Luke, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's for Rey. It's for Kylo. So it's also for May. So when she finds out her sister is alive, shifting her worldview, gets to Kalnaka, changes her worldview. Powerful motivations create powerful changes in characters. Her sister is the most important thing. Her sister was the reason she was seeking revenge because she blamed them for what was ultimately her mistake. The Jedi, if they hadn't shown up, never would have influenced her sister to want to be a Jedi, never would have torn this rift in her family, never would have led to the accident that caused the fire that she thought killed her sister, but did not. Mm -hmm. These are powerful story elements that when introduced create drastic shift, and that's why the story has an arc, and that's why it has dynamic characters, because you have two characters, Osha and Mei, who switch motivations, and they hint at Osha's change from the very beginning from the very first episode because her like innate rage that she could never let go of what happened to her family was the reason that she wasn't allowed to be a jedi even though soul wanted to be this parental figure and raise her to be a jedi that rage comes out in the final episode when she force chokes soul to death um and bleeds the kyber crystal mm -hmm. which there's hundreds of if you watch the star wars explained video it'll show all the easter eggs that show like how they carefully crafted all these things into the story, references to Star Wars itself, not just Fight Club, not just, but references to Star Wars comics. Like the video games, the comics have shown kyber crystals being bled, but we've never seen it in live action. We saw it happen in a lightsaber. She, it's a, it used to be a Sith ritual that you would, a Sith would kill a Jedi, take their lightsaber, bleed their kyber crystal from whatever color, blue, green, to the Sith red, because red is not a naturally occurring color in kyber crystals in Star Wars lore. They bleed it red, and then they would put it in their lightsaber and have a red lightsaber. She did that, while holding the lightsaber, which we've never seen before, mm -hmm. I've got this awesome visual of it coming out blue and shifting to red, showing the dynamic shift in her character from good-hearted to evil, the rage taking over. The rage she's felt finally had a source to be blamed, and that source, because of the mystery that unfurled that told a great story in, in this plot, the mystery unfurled led her to realize that that rage was actually towards the Jedi and not towards her sister. That rage was towards the quote-unquote good guys who are complicated in this. Yes, good and evil is not just black and white, but that's been in all Star Wars, and I can explain that too. It's it's just, it gets frustrating, like, because when you're looking for things to be bad, they'll be bad. When you're looking for things to be good, they'll be good. And that's where I get in on that message of hope from the beginning. If you're hopeful and you're looking for it to be good, you will find reasons for the show to be good. Yeah, Fun, awesome fights and cool. Go ahead. No, I'm I, to, to that. You're not interrupting. I just yeah, don't no, want to I, I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> um, I just feel like that's such a again difficult point to even talk about because guess that's that's basically the same thing as saying turn your brain off and enjoy it. Andrew said so much about the character arc and I'm talking about that last characters. point. So I'll continue with my original point, which <laughs> was <laughs> you're, you're sticking on this one little thing. Go go to the bulk of what Andrew just said about the story. Yeah, well, that's a lot later in my notes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so you Continue. don't like how her motivations shift. That's where we left it off. But I feel like I adequately explained why, why that happened. Okay, I'll try and combat that. So I left off with, I'm going to find my sister, going to reconnect. Then she decides to turn herself into the Jedi. 
in the same episode, probably within five to ten minutes, she then gets the Jedi try to arrest her, then she tries to fight the Jedi, which she just said she was going to reconnect with her sister who was with the Jedi. I might be wrong, but aren't you getting your episodes mixed up? I'm no. a little lost, too. You haven't seen this episode, so you can <laughs> shake your head. He's seen up to... What, You're saying four? she said, May says she's going to turn herself into the Jedi. She wants to reconnect with the sister. She's going to turn herself into the Jedi. Mm -hmm. Then her sister is obviously with the Jedi. That's at the like time. episode six or something, right? No, May episode four is when they're... The episode four ends when they're about to fight in the forest. Mm -hmm. Episode five starts, and that's... Episode five is where Kamir gets revealed. So who does she say she's going to turn herself into the Jedi to? She doesn't... She doesn't have to say it. I don't remember specifically, but she... she That's her motivation in that episode where you can tell she turns. Because in episode four is when she... We don't know who the, the Sith guy is, the stranger. She hangs regular Kamir up by the tree and that's when she like separates ways from him goes to try and find Osha and then she encounters the Jedi and Osha in the forest and that's where that fight is about to happen which then proceeds to Osha or uh yeah, so hard to convince him. May fighting against the Jedi with Osha being in the mix and then Kamir shows up after which then, after that whole fight goes down, she reconnects with her sister, and in the same damn sequence, she knocks her out and leaves her with Kamir. And she goes with Sol on the ship, which brings up a whole other issue of Sol not being able to tell who the hell May is and not being able to tell who the hell Osha is, even though he clearly has been said doesn't to care about... Yeah, doesn't he, like, stop her before she does anything? Yeah. In episode six or seven? It's like on the ship? Yeah, he stops her before she like... Can... It takes the tracker to find out who she is before a supposedly wise, strong Jedi can tell who she is. Well, they're also I, they're also the same, to be fair. They're, they're not the they're same. Not, they're not Jedi... twins. They're like clones. They're the same it, person. It, it, that's bullshit. Just also, different. it was never shown that he didn't not know. But why wouldn't he do anything then? What would he why, do? Why reveal all your he cards? Why not see what her plan is? See what she's trying to but do? What, he wants to save he Osha want... and May, in my perspective. He wants he, to... He clearly cares more about Osha. Yeah, that's true. Sure, for sure. But uh, also, if you care... if you He sees himself as a parental figure to Osha, we can agree, right? Yes. So if that's her sister, he cares about her somewhat, if he sees Osha as a daughter. Yes, but it never shows or tells that he actually knows who is who. He just, it, the way it's he the way it's executed says May hey, and stops her from after her ship. about five to ten minutes of May being in the ship, and that's after the tracker realizes who she is because he can yeah, sniff. Apparently, sniffing is stronger than one the force. character figure out what's going on doesn't mean the other one is completely a bit oblivious. I can speak, but you guys can never speak me, so that's cool. Um, the tracker, this little gerbil looking fucker, sorry, um, can sniff better than a Jedi can sense. So that's a new thing in Star Wars, which is also really dope. I love it. Uh, he finds out. He also decides to not tell Master Soul. He decides to try and fight a human-sized being who also has Force capabilities. So can we talk about the prequels? Uh, you you like the prequels? I like two of them. Okay, which ones? Attack and Revenge. Uh, Revenge, I love. Attack, so, I like. Phantom, I don't really So Attack and Revenge are the important ones for my point here. So every Jedi who encountered Anakin... Why did they not sense that he was turning into Darth Vader in Attack and Revenge of the Sith? Shouldn't do you do you begrudge every single Jedi who crossed paths with him what for you, not sensing that? What do you mean by begrudge? Like, do I hate them? Do you fault do, I, them? do you fault them? Yeah, do you think it's bad writing, bad character development? No, you because don't like well, those characters. here's the thing: Anakin has had three movies to build up to that point. Uh, oh, uh, May. I'm not talking about the character transformation. I'm talking about the others who would the have. The Jedi? I'm talking about the people who should have sensed the change in him but didn't. Whereas Soul should have sensed that May was. See, the one person that I know has been able to sense is Obi Wan. But he has actively been trying to pull Anakin back normally. Revenge is the, the movie that like takes him full on turning into Darth Vader because of the events that occur in that movie. But throughout. I mean, even Phantom, like he starts off with Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon gives Anakin the option to take the Jedi path. He doesn't force him, just like Soul never, I, I don't want to use the word force to, to Osha. Because he didn't. But yeah. he dangles a, a freaking lightsaber in front of her like it's a damn pistol because a weapon in Star Wars being a lightsaber is a weapon in real life, which is a gun. That's the side point. Why would you dangle that in front of an eight-year-old? He's, uh, he, I'm sorry. No, what were you going to say? 
I'm just going to say that Soul is like a flawed character, like a lot of the characters in the show. And they said that from the outset when they were doing press that, that nothing was black and white in the show, which he, he felt a like... connection with her. And Indara even says that in the writing of the show, they say Indara says, do not confuse Osha's feelings with your own. But it's it... in the story. I guess my main point with Soul being the way he is, is why is that okay? If we, and I'm going to extend it to other why isn't cinematic. It okay? Let me ask, why is it okay first? Because why isn't it okay is a different question too that we can talk about. But um, why is it okay? So it's not. Soul's the villain of the show. I'll, like, so it's not okay, right? And the Jedi do bad things many times over. Um, and in this specific instance of the show, what Leslie Headland wanted for the show was for you to end the show. And I know that, Dan, you don't like this. Um, but I mean, that's a, that's a personal taste thing in my opinion, but the way she angled the show was that by the end of it, you would be saying, why do I kind of feel myself rooting against soul and rooting for the stranger? And that's why they made him attractive. That's why they made him muscular. That's why they made him cool and badass and awesome in fight scenes. That's why they made soul. She said they designed the choreography of soul's fights to make him appear arrogant. The way he's dodging effortlessly, the way he's not drawing his sword, the way that she said at one point she gave the, them the direction, no point during this fight should his head be below hers. He's keeping his head up because he's proud. The Jedi are pride. I think pride is their downfall. And I think Anakin and Darth Vader are the greatest evidence of that. So they are flawed inherently. That's another point. But soul, you find yourself rooting against him for all these reasons, for the decisions he's made, for his arrogance, for his mistakes. Um, and you find yourself rooting for May, rooting for the stranger. And that's a complicated feeling that they wanted you to feel. If you didn't like that, okay, but I think it's good storytelling no matter how you argue it. I just... I see your point, right? I see your point. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no! no. I see your. No, no, no. I'm just. No, I'm not. I'm not saying voice. you're conceding. I'm just saying this no, no, no. is the first glimmer of yeah. like I, I conversation. <laughs> Here's the thing: I understand where you're coming from. I genuinely do. But in the world of Star Wars, when it was, and I know I've, I've watched your episodes with Dan and the shorts and stuff, whatever. Uh, it's just fundamentally, Star Wars was created good versus evil. Mm -hmm. So, what are we teaching? my kids when they grow up and watch this when they're six seven eight nine years old i never got the chance to watch star wars until i was uh probably like 18 19 20. Yeah. let's say atlas my son watches this when he's in his seven or eight year old phase he watches the acolyte he sees a sith what i was telling him i have an answer so that he oh. doesn't have to worry about it he sees a sith in the sense and a jedi master soul and the stranger and he can't decide who's good and evil. What I, does that tell him? So I think, you watched Attack on Titan, right? I have watched halfway through season four, but I've seen everything before that. God, dude, I'm... I just told you, I, well, I, got, is, I got Crunchyroll, I need to finish it. I watched season two, should be incident either for JJK. My, my thing is what, what young people should take away with it. And first of all, I think it's kind of PG-13. Like there's a lot of like murders, there's like lightsaber headings. It's off camera kind of style violence, but I think it's more like PG-13. But I think what young people and people as a whole should take away from this story is maybe you find yourself rooting for the bad guy. And maybe that teaches you to question things. Maybe that teaches you to look at things from another perspective. Maybe the the insight and the theme and the vision moral of the story isn't is is that in the real world things are not black and white yes you can watch the original trilogy and root for luke skywalker all the way and he's the hero that is beautiful it's a great message i love the message of hope it's also not necessarily the way the real world always is and more often than not it's gray so i think the message should be look at look and and dissect and analyze and ask ourselves why did may turn what are these systems in place Look at consequentialism versus different forms of ethics, duty-based ethics. So you've got Soul, who is his ethics are that he's trying to do the right thing, but you it leads him to do the wrong thing. So look at why we made those mistakes and how we can avoid those mistakes. How can we avoid creating the Sith? The Jedi are creating the Sith. The Jedi are creating Darth Vader. So how can we look back and analyze our actions and not create those villains? And how can we try to be better? That's what I think people should take from it. Not that you find yourself rooting for them and, oh, now I root for, for fear and aggression and anger and villainy, but why am, I, why am I resonating with this person's motivations more than I'm resonating with the hero's motivations? It's because you have to take those motivations and turn them into something positive. Yes, she is the villain, but you, you should be feeling an eerie sense of dread at the fact that you're identifying with the villain.
also I'd, I'd like to add to going to your point of what should your kid take away from watching the acolyte if not to be rooting for the bad guys that's what revenge of the sith is so are they not going to be allowed to watch that that episode of Star Wars because that's the good guy turning into the bad guy. The good guys lose. The bad guy wins. He becomes Darth Vader. He becomes the most powerful being in the universe. They take over the galaxy and execute Order 66, which kills like every Jedi. So if your yes. kid can't watch the Acolyte because it's black and or not black and white and good turns into evil, that's exactly what Revenge of the Sith is. And what do you call it when Luke blows up the Death Star and kills thousands of people? I mean, well, at least you said Luke and not Anakin. <laughs> See, that's people vilified. Uh, that's I think his name's Charlie Barnett, Charles yeah, Barnett. I think they yeah. vilified Yord's actor for having a slip of the tongue when he's a new fan of the show. Like he's he's new to the world and he's excited as an actor to be part of this big universe. It's a huge opportunity. He he clearly accidentally said Anakin and meant to say Luke. I got baited. Look at you. He baited. Me. <laughs> wow. So everything's wrong. I I can see acolyte. Greatest show ever. I, I, I just think that, <laughs> that I think that people who hate on modern Star Wars like to say this isn't Star Wars, or they like to gatekeep Star Wars in different ways, whether it's against the actors Are you or lumping creatives. Or, us in that, by the way, I'm because saying, I just said I like a lot of Star Wars that came out in the last ten years. I feel years. like a lot of your points of not liking the acolyte though has to do with the real world, real world situations of the actress of this guy mistakenly saying the wrong name. Maybe he didn't say the wrong name. Maybe he just didn't know. Which is still fine. Still yeah. fine, right? It wasn't yeah. just once, it was twice. Well, any time that I've asked you about like, what what's wrong with the show, the acting was terrible, the writing was terrible. So, I lost my train of thought there. You're just looking for- It's hard, dude. There's, yeah. there's so much stuff we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to your Revenge of the Sith point. Okay. Can you reiterate again? I yeah, so your original statement to Andrew was, why would you let your kid watch The Acolyte? Because it's having the good guys turn into the bad guys, and it's making it look like the bad guys are in the right. Mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith does the same thing. It's the good guys turning into the bad guys. The good guys lose. The bad guys win. Why is that any different? It is in different. Your... So, it is so here, different, please. Yeah, Here, here's so, the thing. Revenge of the Sith? The good guys are still the good guys. The bad guys are still the bad guys. One guy turns evil. Mm -hmm. The main because character. Because a bad guy can turn good and a good guy can turn bad. But there's still a clear delineation between good and evil. There is morals, right and wrong. Acolyte, on the other hand, is clouded. There is no right and wrong. And by doing that, fundamentally undermines what Star Wars is about. Good versus evil. It has always been that way. That is Star Wars. And if you take away that, you might as well do that to everything else. Every other cherished IP out there is now open to interpretation. I can take Star Trek and do whatever I want with it. I can take Lord of the Rings and do whatever I want with it. And if it fails, it's everyone else's fault for not accepting that it fails. So why were they initially hinting at Luke like struggling with turning to the dark side by changing him to a black outfit and they were gonna name it like Revenge of the Jedi and all this stuff? Why were they hinting at that if it was always clearly good versus evil? That seems clouded. You didn't, you didn't listen to me and that pisses me off. Here it is again, I'm gonna repeat. Good versus evil. Characters can cross the line, but the line is clear. There's a good side and a bad side. I mean, I said he was clouded. He's, he's in between deciding. My point is that there's good and evil. Acolyte doesn't do that. There is no good and evil. Everyone's just whatever they do, and there's no good and You're, no evil. So your problem is perspective. No, my problem is they undermined all of Star Wars. Star Wars was built from the beginning by George Lucas, the original IP owner, who sold it, Jesus, I know, I thank you. No. <laughs> no, Jesus is Obi-Wan. <laughs> Anakin is Quite Lucifer. <laughs> that's, that's the delineation in Revenge of the Sith, is they both start out as good. One falls to the dark side, the other stays on the light side, righteous and true. Obi-Wan has issues, Anakin has issues, all of us as humans have issues, but that, just like Dan said, there's always a line in the sand that people can choose to cross, whether they want to be an evil person, whether they want to be a good person. Do you like movies with complicated characters? I do, and that's a bullshit statement because Thanos, here we go, let's go into it. Thanos, winning. one of the best <laughs> villains ever seen in cinema, right? Am I right with that? Thanos, 
Yeah, pretty good. I can completely understand Perfect. where he's coming from. He thinks what he's doing is right, but what he's doing is evil. Mm -hmm. The His heroes, of, yeah. What the heroes are always heroes facing the villain, which is Thanos. General Zod, Man of Steel, he thinks what he's doing is right Can in his own sense. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm making my point okay. that there's a clear line in the sand. Superman and Man of Steel, regardless of how many people think, which Man of Steel is heavily underrated, which we basically all agree, <laughs> Superman... It, <laughs> no, 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 I agree. Yeah, I'm sorry. Superman, regardless, Superman General Zod, in all iterations, Zod is trying to revive Krypton because he lost everything that he, he had, and he is basically what he says in man of steel like uh, my duty is to my people and i have no people superman is trying to save the people of earth because he knows what he has to do good or good and evil okay so there's a line soul who thinks he's doing something good like thanos but he's doing something bad like and he's thanos. supposed to be the good guy thinks he's doing something good as thanos and zod knows they're doing something good as iron man superman captain america batman Soul, okay, you thinks have he's Batman doing... who thinks he's doing something good trying to stop uh Superman and Batman vs. Superman, but he's good, and they end up consoling like midway through the movie. Same, same with Soul. He, How do he... we know that they wouldn't have consoled in this show? Soul, How do we Soul know if any her. show that ever got canceled would have resolved our issues? Soul, Soul, forga exactly. Soul forgave him, like, that's, Soul, that's that's Soul forgave her as she killed her, they reconciled there too. He she said it's okay, but why did she kill him because he killed her mother and sh mm -hmm. and stole her life. Why didn't May kill him? Why, didn't May, why didn't May force can choke he, him? Can, why didn't May, May, who was clearly more leaning into the dark we, side throughout the episode. Shift away from the story a little bit. This episode's getting a little long, which is because awesome. Because the story is the fun. worst part. That's why we want to shift away from it. <laughs> Wait, what? No, the story is the worst part. Yeah, we're, that's what, no, story is your guys' favorite aspect of your movie reviews, and this, you guys want to shift away from your favorite aspect because that is the no, weakest my, part. I say almost every single episode that we do a review, that cinematography is my favorite category to talk about. It's my favorite part of a movie or a show. Every single time I say that. But is it I most important? I say story is most important. Most but that's important. not what you just said. Okay, well, most important. Most important overseeds exactly. most favorite because favorite is personal, talked, important we've, is we've objective. We've talked about story to death and we've we're not changing a lot about the story. Minds. Yeah, because... It seems like from my, my spot here, it seems like you guys don't like, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? I'm trying to understand your guys' point of view here. It seems like what you guys don't like is the perspective of this show, following a character that goes from the good side to the bad side, but they make him, he's the bad guy of this show. But fundamentally, he shouldn't be because Star Wars is good and evil. The story of Star Wars always follows the good side. No, We're talking about soul, right? Totally I'm talking about Star Wars in general, always follows no, the good side. Completely. But we followed both of them crisscrossing in this one. Completely wrong. The, how am I wrong? No, you're wrong about our perspective. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. How am I, how am I, what am I missing? Acolyte doesn't have a good side versus bad side. That was what I was saying. But they no. do. They have the Jedi and they have the Sith. The that's Jedi good, are evil, bad. And the, they're, they're trying to topsy turvy. The Jedi exactly. Are exactly. That's what I'm good saying. Good you don't like the perspective yeah. of showing both sides of the story no, of them no, switching. The, Je not the, the Jedi aren't evil. They're make, they're, they're, they're making bad decisions. That doesn't make yeah. you evil. The story is His leaning towards is the good. Sith side of them being the protagonist. And it leans towards the side of the Jedi being the antagonist. You don't like that perspective of the story. We're talking about characters. They're, they're, these Jedi are such good people and good hearted people, and they regret what they've done so much. Um, let me look at the term for the barish. So Torben, the one with the scar on his face, he's gone into a barish vow, which is really cool. And I did not know this beforehand, but it is a, a vow that a Jedi makes with themselves when they feel extreme guilt and they enter into a like, perma Jedi meditation that they won't enter until they've reconciled that within himself. So for years, literal years, this man's been meditating because he feels so guilty over the decisions he made on that day. Because he is a good person who had a bad day and made mistakes. Kalnaka uh, commit, committed something that uh, even unintentionally under mind control sliced Torben's face, right? This is considered an extreme disrespect in Wookiee culture. It's they, they get branded a mad claw and disavowed from their society if they do it. Even though completely under control, under mind control for this, Kalnaka exiled themselves in a, like this little tree fort and, and isolated like themselves from society out of shame for something that wasn't even their fault. 
So these are the, the level of care that's in these Jedi's hearts. And you're saying that all Jedi are just depicted as careless and heartless. And also those two details, two more cool details that made me like the show more because they're references to lore in comics for Star Wars that I did not know about. The bearish vow is so cool. He's meditating. He's, he feels shame. He cares. He's a good person. Yeah, but what did he, what did he do? He wanted to go home, right? Yeah, so he was in a rush to get this stuff fixed because he wanted to go home. He was trying to go and... So why, 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 why is he the one that feels the most shame? Shouldn't it be Soul or Kalnaka? Soul or... has twisted... If you, as you watch the show towards the end, it's especially apparent that he's twisted it in his mind to convince himself that he didn't make any mistakes. He says twice in the second half of the season... He's doing what he had. I, I did what I had to do. And, like, he is clouded by his, which the Jedi, one of the Jedi codes and tenets is to not be emotional, right? Mm -hmm. But they do it all the time. Clearly there's emotion in the decision to protect Anakin and Phantom Menace. Clearly there's emotion in uh, Luke's heart and all the decisions he makes. I have, I have a question for you guys. Uh, if we were to explain a similar story where it was talking about good and evil and how they cross sides or whatever, but it was a story or movie or show that takes place outside of Star Wars, would that story interest you at all? So the first thing I think of is Batman Joker. If they swap sides, nothing for me. That was not the question. But that is like in general. He means in general. I mean, in general, do you do you like stories about antiheroes? Do you like stories about so you think, know what I mean? Like I outside of just the Star Wars lore, is that is that your guys' biggest problem that this show is in Star Wars? Yeah, is in Star Wars. So well, I'm not. You're not letting me finish my I know, sentence, I know, and then you're getting stuff. upset that I'm not finishing my sentence oh, and letting Aaron, you talk. Oh, and my bro. <laughs> Before like, I lose my train of thought, I think what's bothering you about that, and I don't know if we're on the same page, yeah. is that it's an established universe again. Joker, yeah. Batman are established characters. We know who they are. They yeah. have assigned roles. Never heard of them. So <laughs> it is written. It's so, the same thing as the as the Sith and the Jedi. Yeah. They they so, they are literally now, one wrong move away from each other. And I'm gonna be the devil's advocate here. I think because the devil. Anyway, but I think, <laughs> I think Aaron's point the is devil. if it was like an a, an original IP mm -hmm. yeah. that had no tether tether yeah. to a pre existing IP, right. that would be more palatable for me. Okay. Way more. It just has to be executed so well. The, the Please let me finish now. Okay. Yeah, because you guys do it to me too, Go and ahead. it's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to point out. But I'm not getting mad at you when you do it. You know I, that. I, I know, but I'm sorry. It is an intense debate, and I love you, bro. Yeah, I yeah. really do. No, no, no. We're. Uh, and for everyone listening too, like when this is done, we're all friends. We're gonna go have steak and shit. Yeah, we're hanging out. <laughs> Justin, at least, uh, maybe Dan too. He might have to leave, but we're yeah. gonna be doing another episode <laughs> you after leave. this. <laughs> no, I need to leave. Get out of here. So, <laughs> no, yeah, we're we're all cool. No, no, we're all cool. I love these guys. They're great. We are very passionate fans. Yes, and yeah. that's it's the only it's reason awesome. why we're arguing. Yeah, that's what's exactly. so cool about this yes. is we are very passionate about something that actually doesn't exist. I think you know, the important the important things is everybody wanting Star Wars to win and wanting Star Wars fans. Thank to win. you. It means different things for different people. But I feel the same way about the MCU. If something comes out that I don't like, it's like, damn, that's a bummer. But I want the MCU to win. I want the MCU to be back. I want like, it to be 2019 that's again. That's the thing. Like, if you guys enjoyed this show, all power to you. That's a good thing. Yeah. And I'm sorry we that it got not. canceled for you. But <laughs> we, you. Did, <laughs> but we <laughs> didn't enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I tried. I really tried to give it a chance. I do. Oh, you, all eight episodes. I <laughs> think this is the most productive part but, of this whole thing. But I want to point out Consolation. that... I, I'll tell you, more. let me tell you how 16? it, when it went, I accidentally forgot I had it on. That's how boring it was to me. I put it up on the second screen. I ended up working and I'm hearing, what is that sound? I go back. Oh, I have to rewatch this episode. I went back to the beginning and watched it again because I forgot that it was on. That is how disengaged I was. I, it couldn't hold my attention. And that is the first time I haven't watched an entire Star Wars series through. It, it just... It wasn't Star Wars to me. It was something that was an agenda that was trying to promote itself as Star Wars, See, but I didn't, I just Yeah, I'm not a big it. fan of the approach that a lot of people take where they say like, that's again what I was trying to call the, like the term gatekeeping is like, if you don't like something, calling it not Star Wars. Like if I don't like something from Marvel or DC, I don't call it not Marvel, not DC. You know, it's still. But my point is, and, and I, I can see where you're going with this, but if it doesn't show due respect or if i don't feel it's showing due respect to what came before then it's not part of the original it's it it can't it, kia mundi you don't do that to him do what 
You made him a villain. Heidi Mundy? Yeah. How? He knows he knows about what's happening and then doesn't tell the Jedi Council a hundred years later. How does he know? He knows. He, he, he has to. He never becomes aware in the story. He, all they know is that some Jedi went out on a scouting mission and didn't report back. And died. They, they didn't he, investigate. He, it doesn't, he doesn't become aware in the plot line of the story that they died. I I mean, Venestra could even be co doing a cover-up because... this they is did cover this, up yeah, all the events of... Because they were going to investigate them at the end of the yeah. season, right? So she's she has a tie to the stranger. He was her Padawan. So she has motivation to hide this and cover it up because it's her failure. It makes her look bad that her Padawan is turning to the dark side. So it's showing just corruption in the Jedi Order, which some people don't like, but it also is not breaking canon because she's hiding this from other people. It's not common knowledge. They would still sit there in that council and say the exact same thing. They can't know things that they don't know. He doesn't have Wikipedia. <laughs> it's a, so Vanessa is Green Lady, correct? Yeah. Yes. So the stranger was her Padawan. Yeah. So to your point, why is Obi-Wan the way Obi-Wan is? If Obi-Wan's Padawan ended up becoming the greatest threat in the Star Wars universe, why is Obi-Wan okay and doesn't cover anything up? Why does he tell the truth? Why does Obi-Wan's not okay? Doesn't he go like... He exiles like, himself yeah. to protect Luke and Leia. It's not because he feels shame. He does feel shame on what I feel happened. Like I was under the uh, another impression. I mean, no, it's been a little it, while. It like, was definitely to protect Luke. It was to protect he Luke. He had to go into hiding. I mean, in in the original he Star seems Wars, deeply he, ridden by PTSD and Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, he does, and but that's not something he covers up. Even in the it also he cut himself know, off from the Force. Who? In every case, when a Jedi cuts themselves off from the Force, it's like severing a limb. It creates real problems. Who would, because who, of who, magic. Breath. who would who would he be? No, he had to cover himself who, who, up. Who would he even have to cover up things from, though? Darth Vader and the Emperor, who are still alive and are looking actively for any remaining. I'm Jedi. just confused. Can you ask the question again about Obi Wan? Because I'm confused. I mean, unless I'm completely wrong, Jedi Council doesn't exist in Revenge of the Sith. It gets wiped out. It gets event. wiped out in the events of the movie. So, but there's still. So who would he report to? All the Jedi are dead. There, he wouldn't have anyone to report to, but he doesn't go and like cover up and like lie about what happened no whereas but, but who would he, who would he be covering up this to? is more of an isolated event you're talking about like genocide across yeah, yeah no, that's that's everyone, not, no 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 i don't understand do i don't understand now. i don't understand the question so his question and get me correct me if i'm wrong yeah he's pointing out that the difference between Benestra, lady Benestra. i i call her something else um <laughs> cutie patootie no, oh yeah, she's cute. No, uh, it's the baldness that does it for me. Anyway, but I love those. She's green, badass, by the way. She can do something other force users can't use. The psychometry. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's great. But anyway, let us continue. So I, let me correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But your point is, is that she is covering up because of the shame of what she did, mm -hmm. and is covering up due to selfish reasons. Obi Wan Kenobi is hiding because if he is revealed. And Darth Maul does find him mm. and nearly kills him. That, That's when he yeah. cuts himself off from the Force because he had to kill Darth Maul. And then he realizes as long as he's a Force user, ostensibly, Palpatine and Darth Vader can find, or the Inquisitors who are still active, can find him. So he cuts himself off from the Force to protect Luke, who he's, he's on the same planet with, the Chosen, the Chosen One's son, and then Leia back on Alderaan, who he's also trying to protect. As long as he has a force user, Wait, do you he's guys, going to be a threat to them. So do you guys think I'm faulting Obi Wan for something? I'm. Are you fracking? No, I just think I just think Venestra made a selfish decision, while Obi Wan made an unselfish decision. Which Jedi's have been known. Yeah, to be I mean, selfish. yeah, sure, yeah. But like, I don't think that's just that, with that, that kind of proves the point that Venestra and the Jedi and the Acolyte. Are selfish, whereas yeah. Obi Wan being the, the, time, pri the, the what, what's the word the, the the prime example of a Jedi and Obi Wan. The Jedi are constantly selfish. What do you how call, is Obi Wan what do you call, being? What do you call uh, ripping? Not Obi Wan. Not Obi Wan. The Jedi. Okay. What do you call ripping children from their families to train your militia army for? But what I just said was Qui Gon asked Anakin if he wanted to be in the Jedi. Yeah, but they can't be in touch with their families. Why? But that's the decision they made. Because so if they make that connection. decision, they made the decision full knowing that they're not going to see their family again. And if you actually understand, it's like the, getting a full time job. That, you know, you're not going to see your family for well, forty hours a week. It's that. It's also imagine making a bunch of space wizards. You have to take them away from any ties that they had. Otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a civil cult. war. Well, that and also, if you had mind control powers and a laser sword that can detect lasers, and you can, can rip starships out of the sky, 
and you knew your family on another planet 3,000 light years away was being attacked, you would go and save them and you would kill anybody to stop it. There's the wisdom of the Jedi Order. It's not the perfect solution, but it's a better solution than having a bunch of Jedi all having ulterior motives and connections. That's so, why so George I'm, Lucas... I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to... Yeah, I'm supposed to believe detachment is the answer? That's some, like, Jim Jones shit. Like, that's... It, can, can we... It's order. Jedi we can keep order. talking about the story if you want. Dan, I want to respect your time, too. It's getting close to the time that you needed to leave. <laughs> so we can finish here by talking about the lore and story more. Or, if it's okay, without me being attacked, I would like to shift over to my favorite part of the show. Okay. The volume. <laughs> no. And I don't even think they use the volume that much in this one. Soundstage. Um, which is not a volume. Cine no, yeah, but <laughs> Cinematography, right? That's what you're talking about? No. When I first... Oh, just let me stop! <laughs> I thought you said your favorite part was cinematography. Yeah, we finish my... each other's sandwiches. <laughs> That's when what I, was gonna say. I opened up this episode and we gave each gave our 30 second little spiel. I said that the Jedi and the lightsaber battles were some of the coolest things I've seen from the Jedi and lightsabers in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about that. I want to, I want to, those, the choreography was fantastic. The light of the lightsabers were fantastic. Them cutting through different bricks like the on, environment. on the last yeah the last episode where they're fighting on that bridge and he slices right through the bridge literally that was the awesome. only thing i liked about the acolyte was the fight scene. so can we all agree that it had amazing fight scenes yeah. fight scenes besides osha and may's fight in the finale yeah. were great wish we saw i did not like Trinity. that fight okay <laughs> opening fight was great too yeah, I wish we had more of Indara too. She's really cool. Yes. But can we also agree still if we're Trinity. if we're talk if we're talking about how cool the fight scenes are, can we also agree that this show uses the Force and lightsabers more than tons of other Star Wars content, which is awesome, which I want. Yeah. It's hard because I feel I feel like lightsabers are used so much in the prequels. Mm. And and the Force is like whether it's shown or whether it's just implied. If it's like, just like, implied, though, it's no. But like not that, cool. that, but that scene where yeah, like they used like in freaking, combat uh, so much more than I've ever. What's the seen? scene? It, it's revenge, right? Uh, where where Anakin standing out looking at the window, then you have Padme in a completely different building, uh, looking out the window, and and they're like, they're connecting. Yeah, but I'm talking about in a, in, in a in battle terms of the in fight. fight. Like, and Dara in, uses yeah, it five in, times in a fight. In the opening fight scene. She uses it a bunch of times. Yeah, it's used in inventive Comment. ways in Acolyte. I will admit that. It's used in cool or, new or ways. Or when the stranger is um, fighting that one Jedi and he takes his little lightsaber and goes, boom, 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 three holes in his chest and he oh, falls and over. Oh, and freaking Daphne rest her soul. <laughs> and that was the reveal of him not wearing his helmet, too. It was so cool. That's we a, had both the lightsabers framing his face in red. That's also a lore accurate, specific it was lightsaber fighting style, by the way. The the, the style of tur of using turning off and turning on your saber as part of the combat. Yeah, yeah. See, it was cool. I and I think we both can agree that the the pretty much all the fights in the accolade are really cool Especially and really 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 awesome. good. Yeah. Um, and the end fight with Soul and to my to all of our points, uh, at least on this side. The fights can't make the show great for me. I think they can. I think the fights make John Wick great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but John. But I think there's other stuff to the show too. It's a revenge too, show. But... Yeah. It's literally all fights. I mean, this is a revenge show, also. It's but about it's revenge for the Jedi. But it's not the same. It's not the same. You got to have more than just really cool fight scene choreography. Now, if it's a fan film and it's nothing but a bunch of people spinning in the woods, I've seen some terrible fan films and then also some, some good ones let me ask this ones. do you guys like 300 no i, I thought it was whatever what the absolute shit is going on what the fuck? and i dude i'm a zach i'm a zach snyder <laughs> lover like he's that's the, about the 300 that surprised me that's there. crazy i thought it was i thought it was fine i just i i i, I is that it, aaron over there <laughs> no 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 like it's that i watched that after have se having seen other snyder movies and it was mm -hmm. built up so much for me and so mm -hmm. i was i was so you really don't like just like cool fight scene movies like the rundown i haven't seen that one like uh salon movies the last action hero that's great <laughs> rambo yeah oh, which one rambo. you don't like that you don't you don't like that genre. i also feel Good. like the story has a really cool mystery and cool no, no, like I, 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 fight sequences most often are the thing in movies that I can be like, hey, that fight sequence was great. The movie as a whole, eh, I but like, like BVS, the ending, the Superman Doomsday shot, one of the, one of the best, coolest sequences you can ever see. Most people don't really like BVS. I do. 
to Man, me, the only good thing is the fights in that yeah. movie. See, that's the thing. So like, hey, we're why is it now? You understand how we feel about acting? You, you kind of get where I'm coming from. Like, like I just don't like the story. He doesn't hate it, and I don't yeah. like the acting. But the fights are cool. You don't think that Manny Jacinto's acting is great? You don't think T Daphne Keene is good in it? Manny, Daphne Manny Keene Jacinto was in, the best, and Manny, she freaking Daphne gets Keene's killed off. I think Manny Jacinto is the standout. Manny Jacinto is he was amazing. In this he movie. was He's better in other stuff I've he, seen. What did you say? He died. No, no, it was better. Mean, but what? What did you? I gotta watch it. What, what was better? I mean, Squid Game. Uh, Manny Jacinto. I think that's Lee Jung. Oh man, is that who? Come here. He was great. He was great. I thought he was the best part of the show. He was the best part of the also, show. Also, the guy who plays Soul, he literally learned English for this role. So that's like, cool too. Like, like that's awesome. It's cool. That's how it's, much. That's how much these people want to be in Star Wars. They're the not phoning like, it in. They, a lot of these people wanted to be wanted to be in the show, and I wish the show was so freaking good. But there are also other people, writers, studio heads, that had their agendas, and it just was an unfortunate what was their clash agenda? to piss Star Wars fans off. That was a joke. That, that Amanda, was, was Amanda that. Stenberg said that. It's no, 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 no. a joke. It's said it's to piss off no. white men. Come on. That's not what they made the show for. No. Don't bullshit yourself. In the no, 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 no. I'm the not. I'm not. They made the show I'm not. to make money. I'm not, I'm not white. I'm Spanish. Yeah, I, I, I'm the most Spanish person I'm here. Making, so why out. why am I the one being singled out? Like, Wait, I, one second. Well, who, I'm not singling you. We're not calling you. You said white men. I'm not white. What? That? That? That's, That's the statement that Amanda Stenberg made, not me. Yeah, so I'm not white, so I, I can't be put in that category. <laughs> hypothetical. Yeah. Just hypothetical. They gave Acolyte to a very well-known director and producer with a long history of extremely successful commercial films or TV shows. Who would you give it to to make it thousand times better and would it have succeeded as opposed to having leslie headland and kathleen kennedy i think leslie headland is one of the greatest strengths for this show in my opinion after reading a lot of the comments watching behind the scenes interviews looking at all the details that were put in i mean this stuff doesn't just fall into her lap in the show the, the bearish vow the restaurant from some random game That's not like, my question uh, my question is if you could give it to someone with more experience than her especially in that kind of genre oh if i wanted star wars fans to like it uh i would i would go to george lucas's house hold his hand and then walk him down to the studio. That's the only way I think they would like it. Yes. it or that or Dave Filoni. Even then they don't like it. Steven Spielberg. Yeah, sure. The, the, like the, the, the prequels. The, the prequels. I, think, I think we should. I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's just it's getting to the point where we can't agree. Because uh, that was one of my that was, one of my was that, that point it, from the beginning. But, yeah, yeah, but like yeah. It, it's, uh, one those, start. it's one of those shows where if you hate it, you're a hater. If you love it, you know, you're cool. That's that's what it is. I mean, hating something does make you a hater by the technical definition of hating. Yeah, but like there, there, <laughs> there's there's something to be said of it, it. It does all come down to personal taste. And when personal taste is attacked on either end, mm -hmm. it's it's not right. I'm I don't think unless I'm wrong, unless I don't remember, I don't think I've ever said your guys' take is is just absolute shit. I don't think we've I said think anything said like that agree, either. I don't think we've attacked your personal taste. The questions have definitely been more aimed towards us. What questions? I feel like we've We're, been trying to combat things. Like they'll, the trying first time, to, but like it, the it's, first it's, time that I was able to like bring up a point that I wanted to talk about was an hour and twenty minutes in the episode talking about the fight scenes. I was trying to talk yeah. about story. I literally said at the beginning that when I made statements, I'm talking to a broader audience and not yeah. about you guys. I as soon as I tried to, to change the subject, I got changed. I got attacked for trying to change the subject away I, from the I story. Talk, well, I, I talked for two I, minutes I, about. I I got locked into the witches scene <laughs> by you. I mean, I don't think. <laughs> We didn't lock you. You engaged yeah. in the conversation. It's just uh, here. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go. For you guys episode. like it. Yes. We don't. You don't. So who? Let's who, leave it there. The audience wins. So the audience wins. <laughs> the audience wins. You have to comment and let us know who you thought won the debate. Slash who you agree with, because they're not yes. always the same thing. Yes. Uh, I want to thank Justin and Dan for giving us their time. We were here a lot longer than we originally planned for. I love you guys. So I Just really appreciate you guys stopping that. by and uh, that we can all be friends after this <laughs> heated discussion and debate. Um, this is why movies and shows are so cool. Yeah, it's also right? because time for this because there was just a presidential debate last night. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that. Time so, for the debate. So 
it's really cool that we can talk and disagree and even get heated. But then at the end of the day, we put all that aside uh, for the love of our movies and for the love for each other. Yeah. So thanks again so much for coming on. We post new full episodes every Monday and Thursday. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't <laughs> miss a thing. Join our Discord if you want to chat with us more. Justin and Dan are both on the Discord. This topic originated in the Discord. You can argue with all of us. And yeah. <laughs> so we we'll open a whole section of yeah. Acolyte. Yeah. Yeah. It's good or bad. The, it's the a link, thread. <laughs> the link to the Discord is in the description. It is totally free to join. I tried to set it up a little slow there. We're on all social media platforms, so be sure to check us out there. We post daily content on every social media platform. Thanks so much for watching, and that's, that's a wrap. wrap.